وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن شرح في الكتاب أخلاق وحملة القرآن باي الإمام محمد بن الحسين الأجري أبو بكر محمد بن الحسين الأجري رحمه الله The author, rahimahullah, he said, ثم أمر الله الكريم خلقه أن يؤمنوا به ويعملوا بمحكمه فيحلوا حلاله ويحرموا حرامه ويؤمنوا بمتشابهه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the author says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, he commanded his creation and يؤمنوا به that they believe in the Qur'an. Allah Taala He commanded us that we believe in the Quran and we believe everything it says. The stories that have been told to us about the previous prophets and the previous nations that we shouldn't say that these are uh, the their myths and they have no reality to it. Rather, we believe in it. That is why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He said, "Qulu amanna billahi." وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا Say, we believe in Allah and we believe in what was sent on to us. We believe in the scriptures that have come to us from our Lord. يعني the Quran, we believe in it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in another ayah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَالْكِتَابِ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ وَالْكِتَابِ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ So you believe in this book that was sent to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in it and we don't question it. وَيَعْمَلُوا بِمُحْكَمِهِ And we act upon the muhkam of the Qur'an. Now what does that mean? The Qur'an, it contains and it has in it ayat which are referred to, ayat which are muhkamat. And the Qur'an also has ayat which are known as mutashabihat. Muhkamat are ayat which are crystal clear, which there is no ambiguity in it. It is ayat la yahtamilu ta'wil. It doesn't accept any interpretation. And it's understood by everybody. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. That Allah wa ta'ala is one. It's muhkam. And there is mutashabih. Mutashabih is obscure, vague, unclear verses. And Allah Taala mentions that in Surah Al Imran, Allah Taala He says, "Who is the one who gave you the book? He says, 'Ayat muhkamat, and they are the mother of the book and other books of the book.' And those who have their hearts divided, they follow what is mentioned in them, with the fear of punishment and with the fear of punishment. And they do not know the meaning of Allah. And the scholars in the knowledge say, 'We believe that all of us have our Lord, and we do not remember the names of the prophets.' Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He tells us. In that verse that the Qur'an is muhkam and mutashabih. I mentioned what muhkam means. Muhkams are verses which are crystal clear. And mutashabih are ayat which are vague and unclear. The ayat which are unclear are two types. Mutashabih mutlaq, unrestricted ambiguity. Unrestricted uh, ambiguity يعني it's ambiguous to every single person and these are the حروف المقطعة حروف المقطعة such as ألف لام ميما صادا نون and قاف and these are ayat which are referred to متشابه متشابه they are ambiguous they are unclear مطلقا unrestrictedly for everybody there's no one who knows it only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. ولذلك, these are referred to ayat استأثر الله بعلمه Allah withheld the knowledge of these letters. No one knows what it means. 
صاحب المراقي هي سد وما به استأثر علم الخالق فذا تشابه عليه أطلقي. The verses which are unclear to everybody, that's the first one. No one knows it. Second type of verses which are ambiguous, which are unclear, which is unknown, is subjective. Some people don't know it, some people do. Some people don't understand it, some people do. So it's unclear to some people, but it's not unclear to everybody. It's called mutashabih uh, nisbi. It's subjective. You may not know what it means, but someone else might know what it means. But that is Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he recited the verse, as Ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir, that Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he recited the ayah, he said, أنا من الراسخين في العلم الذين يعلمون تأويله. I am. Because the ayah says uh, that there are people who are grounded in knowledge. You see, والراسخون في العلم يقولون Amanna. There's people who are grounded in knowledge. Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, I am from those people who are grounded in knowledge, who know the interpretation of those verses which are mutashabih nisbi. And there are verses which are unclear to some people. Abdullah ibn Abbas is saying, it's not unclear to me, it's clear to me. But of course, he's not referring to the ayat which are mutashabih uh, mutalaq, the unrestricted mutashabih, like the huruf al Abdullah ibn Abbas doesn't know those ones. So those are the two types. Okay. Mutashabih mutlaq and mutashabih nisbi. Okay. What are the people regarding this now? When it comes to the Quran, we have muhkam and we have mutashabih. Mutashabih is two types. I've mentioned it. Allah mentions to us that the people are two types. The people who are righteous, the noble people, the good people, the believers, what they do is يَعْمَلُونَ بِمُحْكَمِهِ They act in accordance to the verses which are muhkam. وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِمُتَشَابِهِهِ And they believe in the ambiguous verses. They believe in those ambiguous verses. But they act upon the clear-cut verses. So those ambiguous verses, they bring it back to the clear-cut verses. I'll give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, He uses... Uh, the words uh, or the, he uses the pronouns we, Allah uses it subhanahu wa ta'ala inna khalaqna we created now this is ambiguous it's I which is mutashabih it's ambiguous, it's unclear how is it unclear? when Allah uses the word we there is two usages of the word we there are two usages the first usage is it could mean out of royalty because you use the word uh, we, uh, as a royal person, like the queen, for example, of England, she uses the word we, we, we said this, we did this, we chose this, but she's only referring to herself. Uh, so it's out of royalty. There's a second usage of the word we, which is a person who he's referring to himself and a group of other people. So it's more than one person. Which one is the ayah referring to? Inna khalaqna, we created. Is it royalty, or is it, um, or is it a person who's talking about himself and other people as well? Which one is it? This ayah, because it can take both meanings, we would have to take it to ayat which are clear cut, ayat which are muhkam, ayat that only have one meaning in it. And when we take it to those verses. We realize Allah is the creator of everything. Now, this is crystal clear. We then go back to the other verse which use the word we, and we know it's out of royalty now. Okay? The righteous people, this is what they do. They take one verse, they bring it back to another verse, and that's how they, they take the ayat which are mutashabih, and they take it to the ayat which are muhkam. The sick hearted people, they take these ambiguous verses. They act upon these ambiguous verses and they abandon and dismiss the ayat which are muhkam, the clear, clear, crystal clear, clear cut verses. That's why Allah referred to them as thick hearted people. In their hearts, there is a sickness, deviation, corruption, these people. So they don't go to those verses which are crystal clear. But the Quran 
is known. When we know these, the Quran, the entire Quran is known except those huruf which I mentioned, the huruf which are muqatta'ah, other than it is all known. As Abdullah ibn Abbas statement I brought, and also another statement by the scholar of the Tabi'een, Mujahid ibn Jabrin, Rahimahullah, who is the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, Aratul Quran. He said, I opened the Quran. And I opened the Quran. Ibn Abbas. I opened the Quran to Abdullah ibn Abbas. I took the Quran and then I opened it to Abdullah ibn Abbas. Three times from beginning to end. What did I do? Uqifu ala kulli aya. I opened the Quran three times. يعني, he means from beginning to end. I finished it once, and then again, and then again, three times. Ala kulli aya. Every verse I ask Abdullah ibn Abbas, what does this verse mean? And what does this verse mean? And what does this verse mean? And what does this verse mean? Uqifu ala kulli aya. As'aluhu fi ma nazala. I ask him, what did it come down on? I also say, wa kayfa kanat? And how is this verse? And I ask questions. I question Ibn Abbas regarding those verses. So Mujahid is saying every verse I asked him, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? So the Quran is all known. The Quran is known because it's, a, it's sent down for our salvation, our prosperity. It was sent down for it to guide us. So it's all known. So the author, Rahimullah, that's what he means when he says, They act upon the verses which are muhkam, the deviated people, brothers and sisters, who we refer to as innovators, they go by these ambiguous verses. The righteous people, the people of the sunnah, they go for the ayat which are muhkam. For yuhillu halala, and because of that, they make halal, what Allah made halal. وَيُحَرِّمُوا and they make haram that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made haram. وَيُحَرِّمُوا حَرَامَهُ they make whatever the Quran makes haram, they make it haram. Whatever the Quran makes halal, they make it halal. وَيُؤْمِنُوا بِمُتَشَابِهِهِ And these verses which are mutashabi, unclear, they don't say, they're unclear, let's dismiss them. No, they believe in those verses. So Ahlul Sunnah, they are acting in accordance to the ayat which are muhkam, and they believe in the ayat which are mutashabi. وَيَعْتَبِرُوا بِأَمْتَالِهِ And they also take lessons from the parables that are given in the Quran. Quran gives a lot of parables. Ahlul Sunnah, what they do is the people whose hearts are healthy, righteous people, people who are trying to look for guidance in the Quran. When they look at the Quran and they come across these parables that Allah has given, Allah gives a lot of parables in the Quran. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those people who are worshipped, the idols that are worshipped, the statues which are worshipped, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives a parable, an example of them. Allah says, uh, A parable and an example has been given to you. Those which you are worshipping besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah gives an example. A parable has been given to you. And Allah even tells us in the Quran that he, Allah azza wa is not shy of giving parables and examples. Inna Allah la an yadriba mathala. Allah is not shy of giving parables and examples. And this ayah, in Allah la yastahi an yadriba mathalan. It came down when the, the non-Muslims, they said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is this your, what, what, what is your Lord? He's giving parables about mosquitoes and he's giving parables. What is this? And Allah sent this ayah down. In Allah la yastahi, Allah is not shy to give parables and examples. Because the purpose of a parable is what? Brothers and sisters, it is for you to understand for you to digest information, for you to internalize things. وَلِذَلِكَ The people truly take lessons from these parables and when they hear it, it increases their iman, are the knowledgeable people. That's what Allah says in the ayah, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْتَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ That we do not give parables and examples except the people who are scholarly, they're knowledgeable, they're grounded, are the ones who take lessons from it. When they read these parables, they take 20, 30, 40 lessons from it. وَلِذَلِكَ A great Imam, Amr ibn Murrah, is, as Ibn Abi Hatim narrates in his tafsir book, Amr ibn Murrah, he said about himself, he said, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ إِذَا سَمِعْتُ الْمَثَلَ If I hear of a parable, 
in the Quran or I read and I come across a parable that's been given in the Quran. Quran and I don't understand it. I cry on myself. Because Allah says, Because Allah is saying that the ones who understand and uh, internalize these parables are people who have knowledge. So if you don't understand the parables in the Quran, you are an ignorant individual. That's the mafhum al mukhalafa. The Quran, the parables it gives, if you don't understand it, you are an ignorant person. So, Ahl Sunnah, what do they do? They are ones who understand these parables, they take lessons from it, and they try to implement it in their lives. وَيَقُولُ And they say, آمَنَّا بِهِ We believe in all of it. كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا All of it is from our Lord. That's what they say, he said. ثُمَّ وَعَادَهُمْ Allah promised. عَلَى تِلَاوَتِهِ Allah promises the one who recites it. وَالْعَمَلِ بِهِ And the one who acts upon it. النَّجَاتَ مِنَ النَّارِ That Allah will protect you from the hellfire. If you read the Qur'an and you act upon the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save you from the hellfire. وَالدُّخُولَ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter you into Jannah, paradise. ثُمَّ نَبْدَمَ خَلْقَهُ إِذَا هَمَّ تَلْوَ كِتَابَهُ أَنْ يَتَدَبَّرَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He commanded, instructed, encouraged his creation. That if a person desires to read the book of Allah, that he contemplates over it, he thinks over it, he ponders over it. That is why Allah says in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقَفَالُهَا أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ يَدَّبَّرُوا الْقَوْلَ كِتَابٌ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِ All of those verses, Allah is talking about, why don't you contemplate over the Qur'an? Why are you not pondering over the Qur'an? The Qur'an was sent down for pondering. It wasn't sent down for just to merely recite it. The Qur'an wasn't also just sent down just to merely hear it. Was sent down for you to ponder and contemplate over it. وَيَتَفَكَّرُوا فِيهِ بِقُلُوبِهِمْ And to think about it in your hearts. That is why the Quran came down. That's why Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرًا لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ إِنْ ذَاتْ is لَذِكْرًا A reminder. لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ The one who has a heart. أو ألقى السمع وهو شهيد or the individual who brings his ear close وهو شهيد whilst he witnesses there is a statement of Allama ibn al-Qayyim he mentions in his kitab al-Fawai that I'm going to read on you that I, that I came across which is worth mentioning he said this in his kitab al-Fawai he said This ayah, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ الشَّهِيدِ He said, إِشَارَةٌ إِلَى مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ أَوَّلِ سُورَةٍ إِلَى هَا هُنَا وَهَذَا هُوَ الْمُؤَثَّرُ If a person wants to really benefit from the Qur'an and wants to really implement the Qur'an into their life, this ayah has given you the instruction and the tools in which you can do it. It mentions three things that you need in order to ponder on the Qur'an and contemplate and internalize. And then, and only then, brothers and sisters, would the Qur'an affect you. That's what Ibn al-Qayyim says. Because this surah, that inna fi dhalika la dhikra liman kana lahu qalbun aw al-qasam'a wa shaheed came down on, is surah tuqaf. Surah tuqaf, Allah ta'ala talks about death. He talks about the resurrection, he talks about Jahannam and Jahannam becoming full uh, and Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala saying to Jahannam هَلْ إِمْتَلَأْتْ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدْ Jahannam, are you full? 
Jahannam is saying, no, Allah, have you got more for me? Allah wa Taala talks about the angels writing, wa laqad khalaqna al-insana wa na'lamu ma tawaswisu bihi nafsu, wa nahnu aqrabu ilayhi min habli al-warid, id yatalaqa al-mutalaqiyani an al-yameen wa an al-shimali qa'id, ma yalfidu min qawlin illa ladayhi raqibun atid. Yani, this surah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was said that he used to read it on the pulpit on Friday. And sometimes it's from the sunnah to not give a khutbah. It's from the sunnah to just come and recite Surah Tuqaf and that's it. Don't do anything else. It's actually from the sunnah because of the lessons and the reminders that are in Surah Tuqaf. The Prophet used to do that. Walidalika, some of the sahaba, they memorized Surah Tuqaf from the Prophet Sallallahu reading on the pulpit. They memorized it directly from his mouth, alayhi salatu wasalam. He used to read it very often, alayhi salatu wasalam. Surah Tuqaf has many lessons in it. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ The death has come to you, and etc. A lot of things Allah are mentioned in there. After all of that, Allah says, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرًا All of that is a reminder. But it's not a reminder for everybody. Not everybody takes those, those verses in and digests it and ponders and contemplates over it. A people have three things will be like him. The ayah mentions it. لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ A person who has a heart. Ibn al-Qayyim says, فَهَذَا هُوَ الْمَحَلُّ الْقَابِلُ وَالْمُرَادُ بِهِ الْقَلْبُ الْحَيُّ الَّذِي يَعْقِلُ عَنِ اللَّهِ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ وَقُرْآنٌ مُّبِينٌ لِيُنْذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيَّا He said, لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ means what? فَهَذَا هُوَ الْمَحَلُّ الْقَابِلُ The earth, when you want to plant the seed into the earth, that earth has to be the type of earth that accepts uh, vegetation. It can't be any other land. There's particular places in the world and the particular lands that are veget that, that produce the vegetations, that produce uh, the crops that will, you can harvest later. Not every place can you do it in. The heart also has to be that kind of uh, place. That when the Quran is put into it, it's accepting of it. And that heart is a heart which is alive, Ibn al-Qayyim is saying. It's the heart which is alive. And that's what Allah mentioned in the ayah, in huwa illa dhikru wa Qur'anun kareem, uh, mubin, sorry, liyundira man kana hayyan, a qalb, which is hay. That's what Ibn al-Qayyim says, a hay al-qalbi. Your heart is alive. It's not a dead heart. Okay? That's the first thing, that you have a heart which is alive, number one. Number two is, aw al qasama The second thing is, you bring your ear close. Ibn al-Qayyim says, أَيْ وَجَّهَ سَمْعَهُ وَأَصْغَى حَاسَةَ سَمْعِهِ إِلَى مَا يُقَالُ لَهُ وَهَذَا شَرْطُ التَّأَثُّرِ بِالْكَلَامِ If a person puts his fingers in his ears and he doesn't want to hear it, then of course it's not going to go to his heart. And he's not going to be able to take it in. وَلِذَلِكَ the non-Muslims and the people who went against prophets, the way that they wanted to avoid hearing the message is that they will put their fingers in their ears. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعُوتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي آذَانِهِمْ وَاسْتَغْشَوْا ثِيَابَهُمْ وَأَسَرُّوا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا اسْتِكْبَارًا وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعُوتُهُمْ Every time I call them to the forgiveness of their Lord, to the salvation, to prosperity, they put their fingers in their ears and they didn't want to hear it. Kufar uh, Quraysh did the same. Whenever they would go by Nabiullah Muhammad, they would put their fingers in their ears. They don't want to hear it. Some Muslims do that today. When you tell them, fear Allah, they do something similar. They start to raise their voices over the person who's talking. You see? And they don't want to hear it. So they want to avoid it. So when you tell them, Fear Allah, they go, Ah, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. Or they put their fingers in their ears. They don't want to hear this. And that's going to avoid them from benefiting from the reminder. Number three is, Wahua Shaheed. Wahua Shaheed means, Ay Shahidul Qalbi, Hadirun Gayru Ghaibin, that the person is present. The person is present. He is alert, awakened. So we've learned that the person can benefit from the reminder when these three are intact. And that's very powerful. Wallahi, inna fi dhalika la dhikra li man kana lahu qalbun aw al-qassam'a wa huwa shaheed. I'll stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه
Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.